Hey everyone, welcome back to science. This is Mr. Bond here. Um, we are going to be continuing today um, studying the mystery fossil that we started to talk about in our last lesson. Um, so this is going to be lesson 1.3. Um, hopefully you have completed lesson 1.2, which was the lesson before this where we started to um, think about how we as our role in this unit as paleontologists are going to figure out what type of a fossil this is so that we know where exactly to put it at a museum. Last lesson, we spent some time starting to think about what are things that animals have in common so that we can start to think about this fossil right here, which is it going to be most closely related to? A whale, a crocodile, um, or a wolf? So let's go ahead and jump right into today's warm-up. Uh, just a little reminder of what we did last lesson. Because for your warm-up today, what I would like you to do is go ahead and take a second to pause the video. We've got two limbs right over here, a human limb and a limb of a cat. And I want you to spend a little bit of time describing what are all of the ways that this human arm is similar to uh, the cat's arm. Um, and really use some of these labels that you see over here. You can describe the shape, you can use some numbers, all sorts of different ways that you can describe what you're seeing. Um, but go ahead and, uh, now would be a good time, I forgot to remind you at the beginning, but grab a pencil, grab a piece of paper, and we're gonna be writing some of this stuff down as we go through so that you can get your thoughts down. But just for our warm up, go ahead and pause the video, grab your pencil, grab a piece of paper, and use these two illustrations to discuss some of the similarities that you see between those two structures, the human limb and the cat limb. Okay, hopefully you jotted some of those things down. And what you can notice is that there are some pretty big similarities, even though a human and a cat aren't exactly related. And today what we're going to do is we're gonna to continue to look into some different fossils or some different skeletal structures to look for shared structures. Um, because even though a human and a cat are not the same animal, animal obviously, they do have some body structures that um, are super familiar. So for example, one of the things that we look at a lot as paleontologists is bones. Last time we discussed that animals that are no longer on the planet or who are extinct and we find their bones, that's really kind of all we have to go on. All we have to go on is those fossils. So today we're gonna to be doing a reading where we're going to be taking a look at one specific animal in general. And I'm gonna go ahead and read through the entire reading in this video. But if you would prefer and you have access to Amplify at home, you can go ahead and open up that reading and read independently if that's what you prefer. I also just want to remind you that these are some of the tips for um, being an active reader. Active readers really are engaged in what they're doing and they're thinking about what they're reading. If you do have that digital resource at home where you can read along with me, you might also want to go through and highlight some of the words. Another great thing about that digital reading is that you can click on some of the words that you might not understand as you're reading through those. Um, and so as we're going through today, these are just some tips. If you have other things that your teacher generally requires you to do while you're doing a reading, it might be a good idea to think about those strategies as well because this reading is all about us gathering as much information as possible as scientists. So let's go ahead and jump into the reading. If you want to follow along, that's great. Remember, even if you did not open up the reading yourself, but if you are reading along, that's still a really good way to make sure that you're maintaining um, a really high reading level so that when you move on to your next grade, you'll be ready for whatever, um, whatever challenges that you have in terms of things that you read in that grade. So let's go ahead and get started. This reading is called How You Are Like a Blue whale, which might find something surprising in this article. If anybody tells you blue whales are the largest fish on earth, they don't know what they're talking about. Blue whales may live in the ocean with fish, but they aren't fish at all. There are many important differences between the body structures of whales and fish. Fish are covered in shiny scales, while whales have smooth skin. Fish lay eggs while whales give birth to live young. Fish fins are made of tiny bones, 
but whale flippers are supported by just a few bones. In fact, whales are mammals, just like dogs, elephants, and humans. Blue whales share many more body structures with you than they do with fish. Just as whales and fish look similar, but are actually very different, humans and blue whales look different, but have a surprising amount in common. Mother whales produce milk for their babies, just as human mothers do. Like humans, whales have lungs instead of gills. Whales can't breathe underwater. They must first come to the surface to breathe. And if you look at the bones in a human arm and the bones of a blue whale flipper, you can see that they fit together in a similar uh, in similar ways. That's kind of like, uh, just pause there for a second, that's kind of like what we were looking at in the warm up with the uh, cat limb and the human limb. Blue whales have even have leg bones, just like humans. However, in whales, these bones are so tiny that the skin, fat, and muscles of the whale's body hide them. You might not call them real legs, but they are leftovers from a time when whales' ancestors had legs and walked on land. To figure out how two species are connected, scientists can study the skeletons of both species. Scientists studying present-day animals can use x-rays of living animals or sets of bones from animals that have died, have recently, have died recently. Paleontologists studying species that are now extinct use fossils to compare species. Comparing skeletons tells us about how species are connected because organisms get their body structures the same way they get all their other traits. Body structures are determined by the code of DNA and are passed down from generation to generation over millions of years. By comparing the skeletons of different species, scientists can see patterns of how traits have been passed down. When two species body structures are made from bones that are in the same pattern and roughly the same position in the body, scientists consider them to be shared body structures. Shared body structures in two very different species can be evidence that both species evolved from a common ancestor population that had both those structures long ago. The shared body structures found in a common ancestor population didn't necessarily look very much like they do now. They may not have even been used for the same function. To see how two descendant species are connected, paleontologists examine the fossil record. In the case of whales and humans, they look for evidence of a species that had front limbs with the same pattern of bones, structures for producing milk, and lungs for breathing air. All of these things are true of both whales and humans today. And just as a reminder, when we're talking about limbs, uh, this vocab word right here, we've already used it a couple of times today, but just remember, limbs are kind of like arms and legs because we don't necessarily, um, we wouldn't consider that the blue whale, we wouldn't necessarily call their flipper um, a leg or an arm, but we do use this word limb to kind of be a general word for legs, arms, um, those fin-like structures that whales have as well. Okay, let's pick back up right here where it says paleontologists have used evidence from fossils, DNA, and other sources to conclude that the common ancestor of whales, humans, and other mammals was a tiny animal that lived about 65 million years ago. There's a really cool picture of that in a second. Fossils from that time show evidence of mouse-like creatures that had four legs with claws, long tails, and long noses, good for sniffing out insects. Similarities in body structures allow paleontologists to infer that whales, humans, and all other mammals evolved from a common ancestor similar to this tiny animal, even though it looked very little like blue whales or humans do today. Here's that crazy kind of rat-like looking creature that we were talking about that humans and whales are related to. Just as whales have lost the function of their back legs, but still have the remnants of these bones, you also have old structures that have lost one or more of their functions. For example, our ancestors had tails and we still have short tail bones in the place where our tails used to be. The bone structures and other traits we share with whales 
provide evidence of our shared evolutionary history. The ancestor population we have in common from which we both evolved. If you think about it, you can come up with structures that we share not only with whales, but with lots of other animals too. Can you think of all the animals that have a skull, eyes, teeth, and a backbone? All living things are related and share some basic traits like cell structures and DNA. By looking at evidence in the fossil record, scientists have learned that all living things inherited cell structures from the very first single-celled organisms on Earth. That population of single-celled organisms is a common ancestor we share with all other cellular plant life on the planet. Humans, whales, fish, and billions of different species all evolved from a common ancestor population that was made of just one tiny cell and lived about four billion years ago. The family of living things is much greater than we could have imagined, connecting us not only to close relatives such as whales and other mammals, but also to fish, worms, plants, bacteria, and all other life on Earth. We all share a common evolutionary history. All right, so after that reading, um, you may have been surprised as we were reading, there was a lot of information in there, um, but hopefully you got out of that reading that we as humans are actually related to whales. And not only are we related to whales, um, but we are related to both whales and humans, this little creature right here, um, that's kind of a rat-like creature. And the way that that process happens we, uh, is called evolution. So that is how we, even though we don't look anything like this rat um, or we don't look anything like a whale, end up being related over millions and millions of years is this process um, called evolution, which is a process by which species adapt and change. And that is the process that we're going to continue to study so that we can figure out where that mystery fossil should go in our museum. So now that you've finished up the reading um, and we've talked about that key word evolution, um, what I want you to do is if you were able to go on to the Amplify platform and read the, um, complete the reading yourself, so I want you to go back and we're really going to focus on a couple of these annotations. Um, these might be annotations that are similar to something that you have done in class before and you might not have uh, a class with you right now, but what I do want you to go back and do is I want you to think about what is something that you could share with somebody who you are at home with right now. Go and choose an interesting vocabulary word. What is maybe a connection that you made? Um, what's a comment or what's a question you have? Maybe you even want to pause the video right now and look up the answer to your question online. Um, go ahead and pause the video, go back to that reading and think about what are some things that you might want to share. Once you're done, we'll come back and continue throughout this lesson. We're going to introduce the really cool simulation that we're going to be using throughout this unit. Okay, so hopefully you got a chance to share something from that article with someone around you. Uh, we don't have a whole class with us, um, or if you do have a couple other people around you that are your age, great, share some of those ideas with them. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to be opening up the simulation that we're gonna be using throughout this entire unit. So again, if you do have access to Amplify at home, I'm gonna show you how to click through. You're gonna log in using the way that you ordinarily would log in. Um, and then we're gonna walk through some of the steps of the video together. So if you do have um, access, I want you to pause the video right now and open up the evolutionary history simula simulation. If you need help with that, I'm gonna actually log into the simulation on my account right now. So we'll close out of that. So once you log in and get into the evolutionary history, we're just gonna click on chapter one. We are in lesson 1.3. Right now we are in activity four, which is introducing the simulation. So you're gonna click on that.
your screen, once you click on activity four, will look a little bit different than mine, but you wanna go ahead and um, open up. You should see something that looks exactly like this. And we're not gonna spend a ton of time in here today, but we're just going to start to introduce you to some of the pieces that you might see in, um, that we're gonna be using, I should say, throughout this unit. So once you've gotten logged in, if you're logged in, what I want you to do is, you're gonna be clicking on this free explore right here, and it's gonna open up a map for you. Once you have that map open, one of the best ways for you to learn in a simulation is just to kind of start to play around with some of the features. So in this video, I'm gonna be walking through each of these questions and answering them and showing you how to do each of these things. So you're more than welcome to watch me do it. Um, but I would suggest if you are able to get into that simulation at home, pause the video and walk through these questions because if you have the video at home, you're really gonna be able to learn a lot more by following with these questions and pushing yourself to figure out some of the different pieces in that simulation. So go ahead and pause if you are logged in at home. And if you're not, uh, we're gonna continue with that simulation. And I'm gonna help walk you through it so that you are not missing a thing. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this free explore. And what we're gonna end up seeing is we've got this whole giant map of the world. Um, and these maps, these little orange dots are gonna represent different dig sites. So if you click on them, you're going to be able to see some of the different organisms um, that were found there. But remember that in some of these places, some of the organisms that are there are not going to be organisms that are alive today, but they're going to be representing fossils that have been found in those locations. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go and head and select one dig site right here. Um, and I'm going to walk you through just a couple things so that you can kind of see some cool features that we're going to be playing with in this simulation. So as I click on this, uh, this organism that I have clicked on, it's hiding in a little bit here, is called the Tiktaalik. And in order to take a closer look at that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here where it says add to my collection. So now what you may notice is that it has popped up over here, and that is kind of representing if we as paleontologists would have gone out into the field and grabbed that fossil and brought it back to our lab to study it. Um, so the next thing you can hit is, obviously if we bring it back to our lab, we can click study, and it's gonna tell us a little bit of information um, about that fossil. And in fact, there's three tabs here that kind of got hidden by this tip, which I will go ahead and close. Um, but the three tabs, one's gonna give you a little bit of information, like if you were at an exhibit in a museum. One's going to show you what that Tiktaalik actually looked like, um, kind of a crazy looking uh, creature right there. And then the last one is going to break down for you some of the structural pieces of that organism. And just as a reminder, we talked about this in our last video, but the reason this soccer ball is here is to help you kind of have an idea of how big that Tiktaalik actually was in real life. So this picture, you might not get a sense, you might think it's kind of a small little tiny fish, but actually in, um, in actuality, it was pretty big. If you thought about, you could probably line up eight more soccer balls along here and that would be the total length or maybe not even long enough to be the entire length of that fossil. So the last thing that I'm gonna show you that we're gonna get into a little bit later is this tree view. So this tree view is gonna show us where exactly each of these fossils are gonna be sorted um, in our tree of life, which is gonna be something we look into a little more depth in our next lesson. So that is pretty much all for um, lesson 1.3. I will look forward to coming back with you and working through lesson 1.4. We're gonna take a little bit um, closer look at the simulation. We're gonna go back to the reading to study one of the diagrams that we didn't look at too much today. Um, so feel free if you are finishing up this video, 
and you do have access to that simulation, maybe you want to open it up, open up this free explore, get that map going so that you can see maybe some fun things that we're going to learn about throughout the rest of this unit. Otherwise, I will look forward to seeing you in a little bit when we start uh, lesson 1.4.